Hello, my name is Jimmy Vegas and welcome to this first in a series of video tutorials on how to create a game for Android and iOS devices in Unity 5. So this first episode we're going to be going through a couple of things on this project um, and the end result of this whole project is to create a game which you can play on um, mobile devices, whether it's Android or iOS or quite possibly any other device that you wish to develop for. So ultimately this series is aimed at people who are absolute beginners to Unity. So for example you've decided you're going to make a game, you've downloaded the Unity game engine and you want to develop for mobile devices, then this series is going to be perfect for you. If you've perhaps followed one of our other series but you fancy a go at this, then again that, that's perfect for you because we'll be using techniques in this series that we don't use in other series on our channel. Even if uh, you're a pro at Unity, you may find things in this series a bit useful. So once you've downloaded the Unity game engine for the first time, or if you know how to get onto your new project, uh, you should be presented with this screen right here. So, call your game whatever you want. I'm going to call it Jimmy's Mobile Game. And you save it where you want. Uh, don't worry about these 3D and 2D, keep it on 3D for now because although um, it is going to be 3D, it's still going to be 2D, but you'll see what I mean as we go on. Uh, don't worry about asset packages, we'll import them as we go along. Once you're done, click on Create Project. So I've already gone ahead and created the project to save a little bit of time. And we're going to go through the Unity interface as well as a couple of options which are vital to um, developing for Android and iOS. So first and foremost, you'll want to go to File, Build Settings. Now most of the time it'll be already, already uh, pre-selected as either Web Player or PC, Mac and Linux standalone. Whilst you can develop in this standalone, uh, at any point and you can switch over to Android, iOS, whatever, best thing to do is do it as early as possible. The later you do it, the longer it will take to switch platform. Uh, the reason being because it's a different architecture. So let's go click either click on Android or iOS. Let's go Android. Um, switch platform. And that's done it pretty quick because there's nothing in our scene. So if you don't have these here where it says switch platform, they may be grayed out for you. What you'll need to do is when you download Unity, you have to make sure in your download client that you actually tick Android build support and iOS build support or any other support that you want to download. So this is vital here. Okay? That will be the reason why you don't have them. Also ensure standard assets is ticked as well because you may need them later on. Not quite sure whether we will, but it's always good to have standard assets ticked. So, as I say, make sure you have them ticked. So, let's switch back to uh, PC, Mac, and Linux. You see, it's nice and quick. As I say, if you have um, a big project, it will take longer. So, as I say, at this point, either tick, either go on iOS or Android, whichever one you want to build for. The process will be exactly the same. I'm going to go with Android and then click the X up there. Okay, so this whole interface, if you are brand new to it, may seem a little daunting. Over here is the hierarchy. The hierarchy is where we keep all our assets, which are within this scene here, in name form. So for example, we have the main camera, which is by default, and we have a directional light, again, which is by default. So if we were to add objects into this scene, they will appear here in name form. This is where you can parent objects, and by parent, I mean couple them together. So, for example, you can couple the directional light onto the main camera. It then becomes part of the main camera. So the scene here is where we store everything visually. So, for example, if we select this directional light in the hierarchy, we can move the directional light around here. Uh, quick con uh, control Z or Z will undo everything just like in Windows. Um, uh, control D will duplicate things so there you can see 
you've made two directional lights. So holding control, pressing D will duplicate. So let's delete that directional light. Uh, they're the only two functions that we'll need just for now. Uh, we'll go through a few more later on. The game scene window just here is where you play your game itself. So when you click the play button up here, you can play in this window with everything you've put together in your scene view. Now over here, we have the inspector pane. So for example, if we click directional light, you'll see a load of numbers, sliders, colors, all different kinds of things over here. They may seem very confusing at first if you are an absolute newbie to uh, Unity, but don't worry, we'll only really go through the numbers and sliders and whatever that we need. Most of the time, when you add something into Unity, like a directional light, everything is already preset quite nicely. You just need to tweak a couple of things here and there. Down here, we have the project window. Now, the project window contains all our assets. So, when we import assets, for example, textures or models, they'll appear down here. This is also where we can store all our scripts, all our music and fonts, things like that. Everything is within this window. The console, this place contains um, errors and warnings on your project. Most of the time you'll always have some sort of strange warning. You don't need to worry, worry too much about it. They're not that important. Now over here, animation. You may not have this animation tab here. If you don't, over here, click on this little uh, menu button here. Click on add tab. And then down the bottom, you'll have animation. Just click on that, and this will appear. We won't be using this animation tab just yet. We'll be using that as we get further into development. Let's click back on project now. So as we couple these two together, let's unparent them. So drag directional light above main camera, and it will move. They're now no longer coupled together. So let's add some objects into our scene. So click on game object at the top, 3D object, and click on cube. And you'll see this cube appears dead center of your scene. The position is 0, 0, 0. Now usually it is always quite nice to zero out the position when you add in a new object like a cube, a cylinder, capsule, whatever. It just gives you a bit of reference and knowledge of where things are going to go. It feels easier if things start dead center. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to rename this cube and let's quite simply rename it as background. Nice and simple. So you can either do that by going on your object and hierarchy, pressing F2 to rename just like Windows or like I say right click and rename. So this over here, the hand tool, if you select it and then hold your left mouse down, you can move your scene around, up, down, left, right, round, and round, and round. If you hold your right mouse button down, you can pivot on the point where you're currently sat at in your scene. So you can look around, look up, look down, look left, look right, whichever. This, uh, this icon here, the arrows in the cross, allows you to select different items within your scene. But again, if you hold down the right mouse button, you can still pivot on that point and look around, but you can't move around your scene. That just ends up selecting things like that. So at the moment, they're the only two we'll really use. We don't need to worry about these other three just yet, uh, but we will get into them, things like rotating and resizing. They'll come pretty soon. So another trick is your snap settings. So if you go to edit and go to snap settings, I'm going to set these at one, one, and one. You may already have them set as one, 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 but if you don't, first three, X, Y, Z, or Z, set them as one. Then if you hold down the control button and select one of the arrows, the X, Y, or Z axis, you can move them whichever way you want, and they'll move in blocks of one. You'll notice over here on the position as we do it, they will move. So as you can see, we've moved this cube over there. 
Now man is 8 by 0 by 8. If we didn't hold control, we could move it very so slightly so we can fine tune that way. And you'll notice the figures become decimals because they're not, well, not, not moving as strongly as they would be in the snap settings. So I'm going to undo all that. I'm going to change the snap settings back to 0 0.5. And close that and then hold control again. You can see that it does the same sort of thing when you hold control and move. Just over here, it goes in 0.5 increments. So let's put that back center. So I'm going to take our hand tool, I'm going to pivot around here, and I'm going to move, let's say about there. But now I'm going to use the arrow keys. So you can use the arrow keys to kind of swing along like that. You can zoom out, zoom in, or rather move backwards and move in just with the arrow keys. So they can come in quite handy. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to resize this cube. I want to click on this, make sure my cube is selected, and I go and have the scale X across. Let's have this as uh, how big do we want this? We want it fairly wide, so we'll have this as 50. We'll have the Y, or the height, as, let's say, 20. Uh, we'll keep the Z or Z as 1. So presumably by now you may have this big white blob in the middle. If you scroll your mouse wheel, you can zoom out. Zoom in, zoom out. It's pretty simple, really. So, we've now created this great big white object. It's not particularly very nice, but what we're going to do is let's delete this directional light. We don't really need it. Now everything should look as though it's gone to like a kind of a sunset kind of look around. Yours may not look exactly the same. This is all dictated by the lighting in your game. But don't worry about that. We'll be setting everything up um, in further tutorials down the line. Okay, so we'll leave this first tutorial there for now. Um, we've learned a couple of basics. We've learned where we're going to go. Uh, next tutorial, we're going to be looking at bringing in some textures. We're going to be looking at piecing together some more objects. And we'll actually look at where we're going with this game a little more. And hopefully, uh, pretty soon, we're going to have a working prototype. Developing for mobile games can be fairly simple if you do it right and do it effectively. So we'll be trying to do this as best we can. I don't expect this series to go on for too many episodes, probably 15 at the most, but we'll see where we get to <clears throat> um, in a couple of episodes time. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.